Hey everyone, welcome to Q&A. Every week I'm giving away 30 minutes of my time to a coach or an athlete who wants to get better. And today we have Q and Ray and Ray. So Ray, you're from Palm Springs, yeah, right? Correct, Palm Springs, California. Cool, and how long have you been coaching? Um, I just actually been coaching maybe three, four months. Okay, awesome. Yeah. How's it going so far? Uh, I like it, I actually really like it, I enjoy it. I like helping people out and you know, watching them stay healthy and all that stuff. Right on. Um, so is coaching your full-time gig or do you do something else? No. Uh, yeah, I work for BMW. That's my full-time gig. And oh, right on. Coaching is just on the side. <laughs> what do you do with BMW? Uh, I'm a mechanic. Oh, my God, dude. Like, I'm actually <laughs> trying to – I want to I wanna switch industries, actually. Like, I want to do the coaching thing, like, continue uh -huh. to do it on the side, but I want to get into cars. Um, really? Yeah. I I'm actually – I'm actually the opposite. Right? I want to get out of this industry. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, about a year and a half ago, I started a YouTube channel doing DIY stuff um, yeah. for cars. I've got five cars right now. I've got a Nissan Xterra, a Subaru, okay. um, a 1.8T Turbo Beetle, an Integra, and a Ford Ranger. And um, my car channel is growing faster than my fitness channel. <laughs> Damn. I'm actually, I'm actually monetized already on the, on the, on the auto channel yeah. i'm making like 300 bucks a month right now posting one video a month which is Damn, that's cool. not bad so that's I, all i'm doing is i'm taking my teaching ability from uh, my just my teaching and translating it over to, to cars and stuff and it's, i'm having a lot yeah. of fun. nice that's good yeah i'm over it already been doing it for too long so i got you like, i don't think i want to be a mechanic by trade i just want to do videos and stuff about cars. oh okay so that's kind of what I yeah want. so yeah that's a little bit different yeah. Do you own a BMW also? Uh, no, I used to, but I know what kind of problems they have. And I was like, nah, I better get rid of this thing. <laughs> we won't, the we won't money on which dealer you work at. Um, uh, what kind of car did you have? Um, I, had, I just had a 3 Series. Okay, like an E36? Yeah, no, it was a F30. So it was a newer one. I like F30, yeah. Oh, the F30. Okay. F30, yeah. Oh, wow. All right. E30s, oh, man. E30s are hard to get and they're expensive. They're so cool, though. Like, they're really yeah, old. Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're very nice. We're not on the car channel right now. We're on the fitness <laughs> channel. So let's, let's switch gears, shall we? So All right. You sent me a video of your snatch. Let's take a yeah. Look. Um, tell me a little bit about it um, before we jump into it. Um, well... I, always, I feel like I always struggle with it. Like, I know I don't got the technique down. Okay. And so I'm always watching videos and trying to see what I can do different, what I can practice to do it better. And, you know, that's – but I always feel like I struggle when I try to get under the bar and getting that hip contact. Okay. All right. So hip contact and getting under the bar. Yeah. A little bit about you. Like, what, what sports did you play growing up? Anything you did for more than six months? Uh, soccer. Soccer. So soccer okay. Yeah, I still do that on the weekends. Um, but other than soccer, I did football for a little bit. I broke my wrist, and then I couldn't play anymore. Okay. During high school. Which wrist? Uh, my right. Right wrist. And then yeah. are you are you left footed kicker or predominantly left footed kicker or right footed? Right footed. Okay. So you plant with your mm -hmm. left foot then. Yeah. Stick with right. Okay. Any other injuries besides the wrist? Um. No. Okay. I will, my knee kind of bugs me once in a while. My right knee kind of bugs me once in a while. Okay. And then right knee. Yeah. Is that from soccer? I probably, yeah. Okay. Pretty common. Um, I did notice something when you're coming out of the squat, and it, and right knee makes sense, actually, now that you say that. Um, is that how I kind of twist? Yeah, the way you twist. Like, are, are, yeah. is that right knee tender? Um, no, like, I can touch it, and it doesn't hurt or anything. Okay. All right. So for those of you guys just tuning in, the reason why I'm asking all these questions is that a lot of times when you're looking at a mover you've never worked before, worked with before, it's helpful to know the athletic history, any previous injuries, anything, any limitations that they might have, which will point me into what may be causing those issues. So anything else? So right wrist, you broke a long time ago, right knee kind of bothers you from soccer. Yeah. I mean, my right wrist, I don't have the flexibility like I do in my left, my left one. Okay. So... I feel like when I'm doing overhead squats, yeah. it always starts to hurt. Like if I can't go too heavy because it'll start to hurt. Right. 
Okay, okay. So wrist hurts when squatting. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's take a look at the video. So right over here. So here's the first one. Oh, just to let you know, that's my coach. She okay. said you actually coached her for her CrossFit Level 2 certification in San oh, Diego. Oh, cool. right on. What's her name again? Keisha Carr. Oh, okay, okay. I knew I knew the name from somewhere. <laughs> you said that, I like I know that name from somewhere. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. I mean, let's watch the second one as well. Put them next to each other. So I like that you sent me two of them because it lets me know if there's consistencies or mm -hmm. things that show up in the first video were just a fluke or not. Yeah. All right. And I believe the second one, the one that I just you just showed, uh -huh. that one was that one was lighter weight, so that's why it's more like a power snatch. Okay. The second one was a little bit heavier, or the first one you showed. Okay. Can you see both of them on the screen right now? Yes. Cool. So a couple of things I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to note here. Number one, um, I'm not quite sure because the angle is kind of hiding your shins, but are uh, your shins vertical right now, or are they, they have an angle to it? Um, my knees are a little bit over the bar. Okay. So. I would, okay, so the first thing I would do is in your setup position, I would encourage you to uh -huh. try to get, maybe get the bar a little bit further away from you. Okay. So your butt's a little bit high for this position. Um, try that and just kind of play around with that. That's the okay. first thing you notice. Um, a couple other small bits is I'm not quite sure how tight you are up in the upper back, but one of my favorite cues that I just started using recently is to think about pulling your hands towards each other. So what I mean by that is if you take your hands like this and you pull them in like that. Okay. Right now, just kind of go like this. What muscles do you feel turn on when you do that? Back. Like kind of in here and also down here. Yeah. Yeah. Like the lats almost. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what I want you to feel. So get okay. really, really locked in with that upper body. And that's one of my favorite cues right now. So pull your hands towards each other to get yeah. the X and this part of the lat to fire. It's actually more Terry's major, but this uh -huh. is going to be a good uh, stabilizer to keep the bar close to the body. Oh, okay. So uh, next good thing to know. here, what was that? I said that was good to know. That's good. Yeah. Because I feel like I really... Yeah, I do feel like I don't really engage anything in my back, so. Yeah, think of it instead of like, I see I see people doing this all the time where they want to go like this, like a retraction. Yeah. But what yeah. I that is that now my back is also kind of arched. Oh, okay. I don't really want, so I'm going to just pull in like this. And so oh. see how this stays locked in and that's instead of being like this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Try that. It's a, I actually stole that cue from the Chinese weightlifting where they say, use more chest, less back. Uh -huh. And when you squeeze in like this, you're getting the chest, but you're also getting this part of, like this part of, that's gonna help stabilize it. Okay. All right, cool. So let's take a look at um, the movement part now. So on the first one, the first thing I do when I watch someone that I've never watched before is I look at their feet. Mm -hmm. Right now, your feet look pretty good right there. It looks pretty good, look pretty good, pretty good. Now watch right about here. What do you notice about your feet as you get past the knees? Mm. They don't really move. Now look at the toes. Oh, how they lift up? Yeah. Yeah. So that's telling me that you're just counterbalancing all the weight back into your heels. And now okay. how, how are you coming through? Let's see how you're rolling forward into the toes. Yeah. And then look where the barbell goes. Relative to your toes, where is the bar? It's like pretty far out in front of me. Yeah, it's like your kettlebell swinging. Yeah. And then, and then, do sure. your legs ever straighten? No. No. So you're lifting mostly with your back right now. Look at the angle of your back here. See how it's kind of kind of flat right there? Yeah. Watch as you start to lift. You see how it starts to get tighter. The crinkles on your shirt get tighter. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're lifting more with like yeah. hip and back to elevate the bar, and that's why it's going forward. Okay. Okay. Um, ah. Now look at your feet when you land. What happens with your feet when you land? What hits first? I land. I know I land on my toes because I saw that when I was watching the videos. Yeah, you're landing on your toes. 
And then here, you got that big twist happening right there. Yeah. You know, I didn't notice that until I saw the videos, and then I was like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I video myself all the time. It's very helpful. Now, yeah. my second video, same thing. Butt's a little high on the start. And then now, watch how, watch how from here to here, your legs didn't really do anything. You're lifting your back. Yeah. And then watch your, look at your feet. You see how the feet go there. Like all oh, of that. up right there, yeah. Yeah, all that pressure came off of your big toe and now it's on the outside edge of your foot and into your heel. Okay. And then here again, where does the bar go? Out in front of me. Yeah. Here's the thing. When you said that you're trying to focus on making hip contact, mm -hmm. what ends up happening with a lot of people when they try to do that is you get this situation where the bar goes out and forward. Instead yeah. Instead of, if you just think about pushing the floor away, your knees will get out of the way and the bar will make contact with the hip automatically. Oh, okay. As long as you're pushing the floor away and you're keeping the bar close using that cue that gave you. So if you focus on just kind of keeping your upper back locked in, the yeah. bar will stay close to you. So instead of thinking about bringing the bar to your hips, just think, push the floor away. Okay. Like, you ever, I mean, did you like go to the global gym back in the day? Uh, no, I've never, I never really went much to like a gym gym. Like I can never motivate myself to that. That's why I like CrossFit because I, I, I can't. You know, I can't stop doing the workout in the middle of the workout if I wanted to. <laughs> well, <laughs> I want you to imagine the leg press machine. Like, you know what a leg press machine okay. is, right? Yeah. Basically, your back doesn't change because your back is flat against the pad. And right. then what you're doing is you're pressing with your legs to make the, the little carriage go away from you. Mm -hmm. Think of the snatch on the queen as that same exact idea. Your back is going to stay locked in, except for okay. now, you have to actively create that tension. And then what you're going to mm -hmm. do is you're going to push the floor away with your legs. Okay. So oh, instead, I, of, instead of, um, instead of what? Instead of lifting with my back. And... Yeah. Yeah. So lock the, lock the back in from okay. the first, basically your back, the whole thing, all it's going to do now is it's just going to stabilize. It's just going to stay where it's at. So yeah. here, basically what I want you to do is I want you to drive up. And I do kind of, I do like how your shoulders and hips r rise relatively at the same point. But okay. then you can see here that most of what's happening, it's very horizontal in nature. Sorry, mm -hmm. wrong screen. Let me go back. Uh, this one. So here, so what I do like when you break the floor is that you don't really have this huge discrepancy between shoulders and hips. Like they come up pretty much at the okay. same time, but here you can see that there's a lot of horizontal movement. So right now your weight's yeah. to the back and then to the front, and there isn't a whole lot of elevation on the barbell using the legs. So okay, there's a lot of coaches who don't like this cue because it's it's an oversimplification, but the general mm -hmm. mechanics are the same. If you just think of the snap, a stick of the snatch and the clean as a leg press to the knees, so okay. push the floor away till the bar's on your knees. And then once the bar gets past your knees, just think about jumping straight up. Okay. When the weight's heavy, you're not actually going to jump because the bar is going to be in your hands. Yeah. The idea of pushing down on the floor and creating force through the ground is the same exact idea as doing a snatch and clean. That's the whole point. Oh, okay. If you think too much about, okay, I got to pull the bar to the hip and then I got to bring my hips through, I got to bring my knees back. Yeah. Up, it's just, it's, it's overcomplicating a thing. Just, and I feel like that's what I do. I overthink it sometimes. Yeah, just if you, the easiest way to think of this is push the floor away, then jump, and then pull myself under the bar into an overhead squat. That's it. Okay. You're yeah. literally just jumping and landing into an overhead squat. That's, well, that's what a snatch is. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. It, it, I'm always thinking about my form. Yeah, don't do that. Um, what I would do too, just to kind of simplify things for you, is to do less for now. So, okay. for example, um, for people trying to iron out their, their snatch and their clean, I'll often take the floor away from them. Yeah. Because it's like, I just, so for example, we have car analogies, right? Um, I just replaced my first water pump on my, on my BMW, on my, um, on my Volkswagen. 
And that was really, really uh -huh. intimidating for me because you have to undo the timing belt and everything. And if you screw it up, you'll blow up the motor. Yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't, like you wouldn't have like a beginner go straight to a water pump and timing belt job, would you? Heck no. No, you start with like, with like changing the tires. Oil or changes. Oil, yeah. Exactly. Where there's less things to yeah. screw up. So the similar thing with a snatch is, okay, well, let's, let's pick up the bar. We'll start from the hang and just jump and land into an overhead squat. Okay. Get really proficient with that part because um, there's other parts too that, that, that are contributing to the bar getting away from you. If you look here, I want you to look at your elbows as you are going down to the bar. Where are your elbows pointing? Out. Yeah, out and back. Back towards the back? Yeah, yeah. towards the back. So basically what that's doing is it's, it's, the bar is going to go this way. If you oh, I see. Instead yeah. of the bar, elbows going high like that, high and back, yeah. what ends up happening is when you get to the top of the snatch, you're here, right? And then what needs to happen is you're yeah. going to pull yourself down. You see how my elbows, I pull myself this way? Yes. Here, I can turn over and press up. Versus right now, oh, okay. you're kind of swinging the bar around your face. Yeah. So starting with a high hang snatch is going to help you just focus on keeping the barbell close to your body and then okay. working that turnover to punch under the bar. Oh, okay. So that's the first thing I would have you do is just work on the high hangs. So just pick up the bar to right here, jump and land to an overhead squat. Okay. Really simple. Sounds and good. do it a lot with, with light weight till you get really accustomed to it. Yeah. Um, so that'll help fix yeah. that part. Okay. Yeah, I don't really tend to snatch too heavy just because I know I can't. Yeah. So I, I do try to do uh, less weight on that. Cool. The big thing too, um, you have some flexibility, mobility limitations in your ankles and in your, and in your overhead position. You can see that. Mm -hmm. so if we just screenshot, if we just stopped at the bottom of your overhead squat, Okay. So you see how right now you're kind of collapsed into your to your toes here, and your heels are. I can't see the video. Oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> so you see here how um you're okay. collapsed into the toes and the heels are off the ground. Yeah. And then there's there's definitely some some imbalance here with the shoulders. Okay. The good news is you have great hip flexion, so you can get down really low, but you're really <laughs> really collapsed and there's no uh, stability there. So yeah, what, what I, I did feel that. It just kind of like there's just no tension in the bottom, right? Yeah, nothing. So one thing that I like to tell people to do is if you want to get better at the snatch, you need to master the overhead squat. Okay. So for you, what I would do, and this is something that my coach gave me years ago, was take a PVC pipe or an empty barbell and do 10 repetitions of slow squats, pausing in the bottom with tension, and then coming mm -hmm. back out and do it every day. Okay. And... The important thing is with tension. It's possible to get all the way to the bottom of the squat and just be kind of sitting on your on your on your um on your joints, right? Yeah. Versus squatting down with tension on, that's gonna be a whole lot harder. Okay. So one of my tricks that I like to tell people is to start in your overhead position and then breathe in through your nose and inhale super slow. And wherever your inhale mm -hmm. stops, that's where your that's where your mobility is. Okay. So that's where you're able to actually keep your tension and not come off tension. If you go past the inhale, you're just going to compensate and things will start to twist and go off. Right? Oh, shit. So, yeah. so just, just inhale on the way down? Yeah, just inhale through your nose on the way down and stop when the inhale stops. Okay. That Let the inhale tell you how far to go. Oh, now, shit. Oh, damn. The important thing is to go slow because there's a lot of people who will, who will do this. And then they go down really fast, and then they don't have the response time, the reaction time to stop yeah. accurately, and then they go past the range of motion. They go, I did it. I'm like, no, no, no. That's not the point. Like, <laughs> we CrossFitters, we are a culture of task completers, right? We're going to yeah. complete the task, but not exactly. necessarily do it correctly. So all I want people to do- As long as you get it done. As long as you get it done, right? But done is not the same as yeah. done correctly, right? Exactly. So- Yep. Breathing in through the nose real slow and just stop. And I think you'll be surprised at how low you're able to get. Huh. I'll have to try that. Yeah, do it and then send me a video of it. Like send it to me okay. on WhatsApp or something so I can look at it again. But um, breathe yeah. in through your nose real slow and then be honest with yourself. Where's the bottom? For a lot of people, okay. 
they have the flexibility to go all the way below parallel, but they have no tension. Yeah. They just kind of get down there and everything collapses and, and things aren't on. And so that's, oh, okay. that's flexibility. It's your raw range of motion assisted or just without even paying attention to anything. Your mobility yeah. is the range of motion that you have under control. So okay. what I encourage people to and do is to use that inhale to find their range of motion and then get really good at getting strong with that and then start to flirt with the edge. Okay. Right? Like if you don't flirt, you don't score, right? So yeah. <laughs> you have to flirt with that part of the range of motion where you start to go off the rails. Okay. So know where your limitation is and then get really strong there and memorize it. And then start to push a little bit past it so that you can develop that extra range of motion. Oh, and okay. Eventually we want you to get below parallel, but it, it's not worth it to just do a bunch of reps poorly because you just get really good at doing it bad. Yeah, right? exactly. So in CrossFit, we talk about threshold training, right? So you, you, you go to where it's, it's like you're, you're going pretty good, but not so slow that you're doing it perfect every time. We want to kind of yeah. edge. So same thing here with range of motion. I don't want you to just, I'm only going to squat a quarter depth because that's all I've got. No, I want you to flirt with it. So go there and then try to go a little further and let okay. your body develop that connection. Because right now, if we go to the video, if we watch your overhead squat here, um so right about there is pretty good you're already uh -huh. starting to lose it you're already on the toes here you see that already leaning forward yeah already leaning forward but watch when you get lower watch how it gets worse there right about just about oh, okay. shift even further forward you see that yeah i and saw it that. lower and it gets worse 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 there so if we're okay. realistic your range of motion in the overhead squat with tension is probably right about there okay which isn't ideal right but, no. but it's a baseline so a couple small things i would do with you number one i would have you move your heels out a little wider okay and that will give your hips a little bit more room and then i okay. feel that you can practice and this is my favorite way to teach the overhead squat is uh jump up on a pull-up bar okay uh-huh your overhead position should be pretty good then what you'll do is you just bring your knees to your chest like this up and out and then bring your heel to your butt so now, so instead of just falling into the squat, we're developing that awareness of how to use your hip flexor and your hamstrings to stabilize that bottom position. Okay. Does that makes sense? crazy. Yeah. It's so weird. And, you know, and I've, I've coached people on this for years, like, hey, knees out, knees out, knees out. And knees out's fine for people who, you know, they're just beginners or just, just learning. But uh -huh. it's a Band-Aid. It doesn't actually solve the issue. Okay. Your knees collapse like that because your body's looking to find tension somewhere. Oh. And if the muscle isn't, the muscle that's supposed to be creating the tension is not really strong, uh -huh. or even aware, it needs to be really short to find tension. Damn. So, you know, my favorite, my favorite analogy is this. Okay. So if you flex your bicep right, you can feel your bicep really tight here. Yeah. Try it. Yeah. So flex your bicep. Now start to straighten your arm. Can you create the same tension on the bicep when your arm is longer? Do you feel it as much? Uh, not really. Not really. No. So here, now bring it back to where you can really feel your bicep. Probably right there. You can make okay. it short, Right? So yeah. You have to make the muscle short to find it. So basically what's oh, happening actually... in the squat is if that inside of the leg is really weak. So the inside of your leg, this part right here, this is the part that stabilizes uh -huh. the squat. This is what actually helps you make your knee and toe track the same direction when you're squatting. If the okay. hamstring is weak, is weak, it's going to have to get really, really short to find a position of tension. Yeah. Which is happening with you here. Like it's, it's collapsing in because there's no tension. There is no way to find that connection. That's crazy. So <laughs> my favorite way to teach this now is, hey, like you can do this at home by yourself or like, or like in the shop when you're bored, right? Stick one foot out in front of yeah. you, you know? Pretend like you gotta, you gotta, you know, you gotta make some extra money on the weekends. So you're gonna go strip for money, right? But some creepy person <laughs> left a hundred dollar bill all the way over there. Uh -huh. You don't want to get close to them, so pull it with your big toe. And what you're gonna feel is that hamstring's gonna turn on. Oh, okay. Now, how can you create that same feeling when you're squatting? You just pull yourself down mm -hmm. instead of just falling. Oh, okay. So, so play around with that. I mean, I like the. Yeah the pull-up drill because you'll you understand the feeling of bringing your knee up and your heel to your butt 
and now you're in a perfect yeah. spot, right? So yeah. I like to just kind of introduce people to that feeling, and then now actually go apply that to your to your squat. Okay. So that's your first step with with your overhead squat is to start using the right musculature to pull yourself down instead of just going down passively. Just yeah, just trying to go down to the floor. Yeah, yeah, because again, we're task completers. But we want yeah. <laughs> in order to be good task completers, we need to master the movement first. So exactly. yeah, exactly. So play around That's with that, that breathing thing, that inhaling and pulling yourself down and take video of it, uh -huh. it to me. And I think you'd be surprised that you can't go that far. Yeah. And, you know what I think I actually saw because I do obviously I follow you on Instagram. And I think you had posted something about that, didn't you? Yeah, several times. Yeah. Yeah, because I saw it and I tried I think I did try it one time. And I, yeah, I didn't go down very far. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? Keep doing it every day and just keep flirting with the edge. Yeah, okay. Yeah, and just that. So I'll, I'll give you this, this much. Um, when I first met Julian, my coach Julian, he taught me how to squat like that. I, was, uh -huh. I, I used to teach knees out all the time, spread the floor all the time. And he's all, dude, you're going to F yeah. if you do that. I'm like, no, I won't. You're, you're wrong. And then... <laughs> And then, like, last month, I, literally last month, I remembered that the summer before I met him, I was using voodoo floss, you know this stuff? Yeah. Uh, I was using it to tape my hip together to squat because my hip was so jacked up. And now that I Shit. squat like this, I never have any problems with my hip anymore. Oh, damn. It's pretty okay. dang awesome. And so, That's start crazy. with that. Like, the, the biggest thing is fix your squat first. Yeah. And then let's work that make the overhead squat work really well. And then okay. that will give you the confidence to get in the bottom. Because you're talking about how you don't have confidence to get in the bottom of the squat. Yeah, exactly. Because your structure is not strong. Okay. That's the big problem. If you want to get good at the over at the snatch, you have to be good at the overhead squat. And if you and to get good at the overhead squat, you have to be good at the air squat. Yeah. So work on that and then um, I'm happy to look at the video if you want to send it to me. Just uh Okay. Try that. Try that drill I gave you and then play around yep. with it every day. Sounds good. Apart from that, um, well, that's the foundation. So the yeah. squat first. Fix the squat first. And then as far as building the technique, I like that you're keeping the weight light because that's how you develop good technique and not just throwing heavy weight around all the time. Yeah. But, um, for now, just simplify your whole training by taking away the floor. Just pull okay. from the high hang and work on jumping and landing, jumping with your feet flat on the ground and landing with your feet flat too. Okay. So not landing all toesy and get off balance. Yeah. Um, and just keep the bar close. Okay. Now, as far as picking the bar up off the ground, practice the lift off separately. Mm -hmm. Just don't do it all as one step, if that makes okay. sense. Okay. Um, so just do maybe do like a first pull up to the knees and that's yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And just focus on pressing the floor away and okay. do it slowly like do it really slow so that your body can develop that memory of what it's supposed to feel like okay so and when you're doing them don't get don't confuse yourself with so many okay i gotta do this 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 no yeah like, start with a bar here like let's just walk you through this the, the snatch for right now okay this will be your homework right. you're gonna walk up to the bar you're gonna set your feet so that your big toe is right underneath the bar okay okay a lot of times people get way too close I tell people, dude, don't be clingy, man. Like, no one's going to want you if you're clingy. Same thing with the bar. Don't be clingy. Like, give it some room, put the bar over your big toe, and then squat yourself down to the bar, and then bring your shins to the bar. Okay. And then when you're down at the bottom, you're going to pull your hands towards each other to get your pecs and the upper part of your lat to turn on. Okay. That's going to stabilize the bar. Then all you're going to do is you're going to look up and do a leg press to the knees. Mm -hmm. so press mm -hmm. with the legs. And then okay. bring your hips back underneath, bring your shoulders back, and then stand up. Okay. And then from there, you're going to just jump and land in an overhead squat. And mm -hmm. I always tell people that when they're doing snatches, to pause in the bottom when they receive the bar. Like, two, three seconds in the bottom mm -hmm. before standing up. Okay. At, so at, don't stand up right away? Don't stand up right away. Um, I don't know if Coach B will ever open his garage up again with all the COVID stuff, but, like, back in the day, we would have people come over and like whenever they'd snatch, we just make them stay in the bottom until we got tired. <laughs> you know, because it's like you're always rushing out of the bottom, right? If you don't yeah. spend time there, you're not going to get comfortable there. 
Yeah, I feel like we just try to get to the bottom, and as soon as we're down there, just yeah. get back up. No, man, savor that position. Like, okay. sit down there, get comfortable where you're not comfortable. That way, when you throw big weight over your head, then you'll be comfortable. Yeah. So that's a big thing. So, so that's basically it with your snatch. Okay, feet, big toe under, under the bar, set mm -hmm. your hands, pull the, pull the bar together. Leg okay. press, then bring your hips through, jump and land overhead squat, pause for two seconds, stand. Okay. And that's it. And then maybe do three of them there. Okay. I don't recommend doing like five because once you get past three, that's when it starts to get really crappy. Okay. <laughs> so um, do quality reps instead of a ton of reps. Yeah. And then, Makes sense. And then spend a lot of time, if you can, just practicing the overhead squat with a PVC pipe or an empty bar. Okay. That's going to be a lot more beneficial than just swinging the bar over your face all the time. Um, yeah. One of my favorite warm-ups for the snatch is I'll start with the bar on my back, and I'll just put it over my head and do a few overhead squats, and then put it back on my back, and then just do uh, snatch drops where okay. you get your feet up and punch yourself underneath. Yeah. And that way I get used to um, creating tension quickly, and then I'll start snatching. So that's oh, okay. for snatches. All right, sounds good. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, I don't think so. Just I just want to get just the, the fundamentals down, you know, from there just make it grow and get better. Yeah, yeah. But I I do want to become a better coach, so whatever knowledge I can get and tips and tricks, you know, I I do appreciate. So. Yeah, man. Well, thanks for ha thanks for coming on the show with me. Um, Thank you for having me. Yeah, and we'll um I'll, I'm expecting that video from you later, okay? For sure. Sounds good. All right. Take, take care. All right, man. Say later. You too.